lots of good activity going on here. Dung beetles are eating most of it before we can get it. Welcome back. Today I have my cinematographer back with me. So I wanna show you something that kinda of ties into the last video. If you didn't see the last video about making a food forest the easy way, that's fine. You can watch it later or never watch it at all. This will still be useful to you. I'm talking about, in the previous video, the idea of establishing islands, little islands of fertility in your grass to start out a food forest. So to make little islands or plant guilds or whatever you wanna call them. So today we have a little guild right here that we planted back when it was not summer, when there was not lots of rain, and when there wasn't grass all over here. This area was pretty much bare when we planted it. We put in uh, this nice crab apple, which will pollinate our other apples. We could also make jams or jellies out of the crab apples. We have a Eliagnus right here, a gummy berry, nitrogen fixing little shrub. We have some popcorn trees, which planted themselves, which we do not want. They're allelopathic and super invasive and they're not an invasive I actually like, like one of the very few. Then here we have a canna. There's another canna or possibly a turmeric right here. And we're gonna turn this into a island the really easy way without having to work too hard. Our first step is to get this area wet. We haven't uh, had any rain in about five days or something like that and we have sandy soil so the Water runs right through it sometimes. So it's, it's been hot and dry, and we are gonna soak this area first because we're gonna put down a weed block and some mulch. And what happens when you do that is you can trap in dry ground. Just as you can keep moisture in, you can also keep in dryness, and you don't want that. I've seen a few skincare commercials in my day, and I know that that is wrong. And then the next thing we do after we soak this area down real well, is throw a little more fertility on it. If you have some compost, that's great. If you have some food scraps, that's great. I happen to have fertility from our cows, which is cow manure that I know is not infected with anything because we don't spray and we don't feed them anything that could possibly have any toxic chemicals in it. So after the water, you just put in your organic matter, whatever you've got. You've got alfalfa pellets, throw some of those in there. you got peanut hay, throw some of those in there. Kitchen scraps, compost, dry cow manure, a little bit of dusting of chicken manure or whatever. I think it gets the ground kicking better. It gives the worms something to eat, the microbes and the fungi, and it's slow release fertilizer. The next thing we do is put down some cardboard. We want to get up to this ginger right here and leave this poor thing alone. And we don't want to run over that turmeric or whatever it is. We'll just put down some cardboard in between, tuck it in as best as we can. This is our weed suppressing layer. And I wet it as we go. Get that moisture running. this stuff in as good as we can. pumpkin I didn't plant, and apparently the pigs planted, is doing better than the pumpkins we did plant that we weren't supposed to have known that we planted. They, they're not supposed to know they were planted, but look at them. This is one of the compost piles that we had bread in, 
and it just disappeared. The birds were picking bugs out of it. Uh, my son reset the pile. He put in some peanut waste and some other stuff. The grass clippings. They really blackened up the the wood chips, though. The uh, all of that that bread we composted <laughs> and it fed the birds for like a month. Now it doesn't matter if you don't have a bunch of compost or half finished compost like this stuff. You can use wood chips, you can use fall leaves. If you have some straw that you know hasn't been sprayed with anything or grass clippings or whatever else, use them. Mulch the area. The idea is, is you're gonna suppress the weeds and create this island of fertility, which you can move out from later. And this is the kind of work you can do in an hour at a time or less one bite at a time you know and that one bite at a time allows you to do a lot of things over time it's eating an elephant so just go for it I water down each layer as I go just to make sure that that moisture is in there. It's going to take some effort for the moisture to go through all these layers, so I want to give the rain a head start. Another thing I like to do is to take yard waste and put it into the islands to rot down over time, feed the fungi, and fallen limbs, rotten wood, unrotten wood, that's all good. We grow mushrooms, feed the system. If you've got great big pieces of wood like that, just throw them in there. I could go get a ton more and throw it in here. That'd be awesome. Now, you're gonna have to kind of keep it a little flat if you're living in a you know gated community or something like that but you can get away with a lot more than you think if you're kind of neat about it like if you throw down some logs and stuff <laughs> and arrange them oh that's the border you know but they'll rot down and they'll you'll have skinks living underneath them and all kinds of good life in there plus all the fungi so you know, just go ahead and use that if you have it another thing you can do if you're not worried about how pretty it looks the plants don't care if it's pretty, but if you're not worried about how pretty it looks, you know, you let the weeds grow and you throw down your weeds as part of your chop and drop. So this is mostly ragweed right here. And I tell you, it's better to cut your ragweed now before it goes into bloom than it is to suffer with it later. When you see it, use it. It's a wonderful resource. Got all kinds of stuff in here. Throw some weeds in there. wonderful invasive mimosa trees. Poke weed. Oh, that's soil fertility. Big compost pile. We could throw a ton more on there. But we're gonna make it look a little neater instead.
call that life. Got little creepy crawlies in here, worms in here, little roaches in here. You know, these guys are leaving their frass behind in building soil. So we use the lawnmower and I run it in circles, shoot all the grass into piles. And this is what happens when I don't pick it up fast. It kills the grass underneath. But we want to take this fertility and put it over around our trees. So our lawn feeds our food forest. Before we mow the lawn, we have to pick up limbs. And we don't take them to the road, obviously. We're not gonna waste all that soil fertility. Now we just have the kids throw them at the bases of the trees, and sometimes they rot down and feed that tree, and other times we can just grab them, make biochar out of them, we burn them down into ashes, and of course, like right now, can use them for mulch and fungi and life bunkers. If it's organic, you can pretty much compost it. Smash down our chop and drop a little bit. There we go, this is gonna be years of, years of fertility. Low release. You wouldn't want to throw this stuff in your compost pile because it takes forever. Just throw it out here, it's fine. How long is this tree gonna be here? A long, long time, Lord willing. Now, put our grass on the island. If we wanted to make this really pretty, we could now put a layer of uh, wood chips on top of it or something, or not do it quite so thick. Just throw wood chips around. But I'll tell you what, when my dad and I, years ago, 13 years ago we started it, when we put in a food forest in his and mom's backyard, we went down the road in Fort Lauderdale and gathered all the yard waste bins. And we literally piled up three feet of yard waste and put the trees and stuff into it and in that tropical rainy climate that broke down into soil so fast and we were seeing worms in the backyard we never saw worms when i was a kid worms and all kinds of soil life and they had mushrooms growing back there it was on top of this dead beach sand unbelievable and it uh transformed it we actually had soil now one thing I am gonna do here is pull it back from the bases of these a little bit because I don't want to accidentally rot them out if we get a big rainstorm and this starts heating up or because I watered it it starts heating up we don't want to rot the trunk so we give them a little bit of space here sometimes it seems like it's necessary and sometimes it really just doesn't seem to matter some trees will just root right out of the trunk if they get buried deeper and other ones just give up on you so I don't risk it most of the time unless I'm feeling really lazy and I just throw stuff around. I haven't ever actually lost a tree to root rot. Hey, look at this. There's a little life right there. That's how easy it is to make a food forest island. And look, if you don't have all the organic matter that I had for this video, that's fine. Use whatever you have. The idea is just to have a suppressive layer to knock the grass down, 
water underneath it really well. Throw it on some compost if you have it. If you don't, no biggie. The grass underneath is gonna rot. That'll work anyways. And then just get enough of a layer on top of it to make it crush those weeds and keep that cardboard down so the cardboard all disappears. That's gonna be the most fertile area in your food forest. And if you do one of these, you know, every week or every day, and you've just planted your trees crazy all over the place and you start to make these little islands around them and you have little plants that you put in there. I didn't show it in this video because we're running out of battery, but we could turn around and make some little pockets in there, put in a little bit of compost, plant some beans, plant some okra, plant some pumpkins or whatever else we want to go through there or stick in a few sweet potato slips. I mean, whatever you want to plant in there, just plant it in there. We could put more perennials in there. But that area is going to be super fertile and then we mow the grass around it and then throw the grass clippings on top of it and bit by bit as the shade grows, the island next to it and this island the canopy will touch, the grass is not going to be a problem when the system grows. So just a few thoughts on food forests. I got a lot on food forests at thesurvivalgardener.com and if you are in Florida or zone 8B to about 11-12 my book, Create Your Own Florida Food Forest, the second edition is useful. And also, some of you guys probably remember, uh, I guess it was a year and a half ago or so, um, y'all gave my uh, son some, some super chat donations towards a computer. Well, he's, he's got it and he has been mastering graphic design and doing uh, some really excellent work. This is his new May Your Thumbs Always Be Green design and if you wanna support his little business, um, I will put a link to this below, but thank you guys that already supported him and threw a vote of confidence his way. Um, th that's just awesome, you know, and he's he's really working with it. So um, anyhow, link below. Catch you next time. Thanks for joining me. And until we meet again, may your thumbs always be green. Pathways of a food forest creating innovative upwardly mobile solutions for life. The purpose driven food forest.